morning to everybody on the class. So this class I've been doing at um, some of the, the hair shows. Uh, we did it in Washington, D.C. for Cosmoprof. We also did it in, uh, I did it in Nashville for Cosmoprof as well. We're gonna be doing it in the fall. The great thing about this class is it's all about social media, but not to become famous on social media, which is where I think a lot of social media classes go. Um, but my thought is if you want it to be more local, if you want to make yourself bigger in your town, there's different ways to go about social media than um, the standard just hashtagging and doing different things. You got to be very specific with the way that you work with uh, social media. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The other great thing about this class, it's very, this one's going to be a little more straightforward, but if you go see it live uh, this fall, if you're at any of the uh, Cosmoprof shows, I'll be at those. Um, I have a couple other shows lined up to do as well. So if you see this class in other places, it's going to be a little bit different because it's more interactive and there's a lot more questions being asked during it. So it's a little bit, it can go in different directions because I think a lot of people have questions about this subject uh, for sure. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to start off. I want to uh, first go into, so let's just talk about um, the different platforms in social media. Obviously, you guys probably know my stuff from YouTube uh, or Instagram, um, and now we've been growing on Facebook. So, but we started out on YouTube, and I think that the cool thing about YouTube, and if you think about it, not as a should I start doing YouTube videos so that everybody in the world sees me do them? Why should I start doing YouTube videos for my salon? And I talk about there's one guy that I talk about all the time. His name is Douglas McCoy. Uh, he owns a salon called House of Pop. So you can look that up. I believe it's at House of Pop on Instagram. I think that he is one person that does uh, videos for the salon better than anybody because he's not putting the videos out there to necessarily educate hairdressers, maybe to inspire them. But what he's doing is he's putting out videos that make your clients um like it's all about his salon everything he does is about his salon so i think it's really cool the way that he goes about everything they're very inspirational videos so if you're looking for some inspiration on what a salon would shoot i think that he does a great job now the other great thing about youtube and the reason you should make youtube videos is because if you think about who owns youtube google owns youtube so if the number one way that anybody finds your business is through Google. So nobody looks in any books or yellow pages or anything for businesses nowadays. They go straight to Google. Um, sometimes now they don't even go to Google. They ask Siri or they Facebook uh, search it. So, uh, but Google is a, is a very important source for your salon. So if you have YouTube videos, if you type in um, Gratitude Salon in New Hope, which is our salon, you're going to see all the different videos that we've created. So you need to make sure that those videos aren't necessarily for um, to get popular. They're not put out there to get millions of views. What they're put out there for is to showcase your work, showcase your salon in the best way possible, and also to make you more searchable on Google. So Google's gonna show you uh, on more things, the more things that you're interactive with. So if you have, your YouTube account, if you have your Facebook account, all of those things, when somebody goes to search you, you're gonna become more searchable as a business. So the great thing about this, everything that I'm gonna say to you guys today is the fact is most of the salons in your area aren't doing these things. So you can get ahead of everybody else starting today if you just do these certain things. So the next one I wanna talk about is Twitter. Now Twitter is, um, something that I think is a good communication tool, but I don't think it's necessarily great and something you should spend a lot of time on as a salon. So if anybody out there has a successful salon running on Twitter, let me know, but I haven't met one yet. Um, I think Twitter is cool to just keep up with information, but I, the only reason I put it on here is to tell you that I think your time is more spent on other things. So have a Twitter account so that you are searchable, keep it active. Um, so do post on it, but don't, don't, spend a lot of energy and a lot of time on it. Now, Instagram. Instagram is a, a platform that was built for hairdressers, I think. So it's one of those platforms, it's very visual. Everybody's posting pictures. 
everybody's posting videos. So I think that the the biggest challenge with people today is that they're not making the transition to what Instagram is. So Instagram is now stories and video a lot. It is images as well, but as a hairdresser, you gotta be able to, to hit all three platforms. You gotta be able to tell a great story. You gotta be able to, um, to post video. Um, one minute videos is great. And, and then you have to be able to get great pictures, which we're gonna talk about uh, later on as well. So we'll get more into that platform as we go. LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn, I get a lot of friend requests from hairdressers on LinkedIn. And I think that a lot of people use this platform wrong. I don't think it's necessarily built for a salon to get clients. It's actually not at all. Um, but I think it's good to have. So if you're looking to network, you're looking to talk to other salon owners, I think you could build a pretty good network. Um, for me, as I'm looking to reach out to brands, I think it's an untapped uh, network where you might have a CEO of a, a company that you never could have gotten contact with before. But now you have that CEO of the company right there. You can message them. They probably have like 20 friends on there. So it's an easy way to get to somebody that's higher up in a company or to connect with other salon owners. Because I, I think another challenge that we have as salon owners in um, is that you can't talk to another salon owner down the street. There's a salon uh, on the right of me. There's a salon on the left of me. I can't go over to those salons and talk about challenges that I'm having or what they're doing to be more successful. But what I can do is connect with other salons that I think are successful on LinkedIn. So if you're looking to find somebody, uh, a mentor or somebody like that, then LinkedIn is a great way to go. Uh, the next thing is Snapchat. Snapchat's cool because I'm not a Snapchat person. I, I I tried it, um, but I think Snapchat is great for a salon. If you think about the fact that uh, Snapchat's very in the moment, it's fun. Um, so if you have somebody in your staff that is really good with Snapchat, you could really create some really fun stuff. But the other thing that I really love about Snapchat is that it could be a great communication tool between you and your guests. So let's say somebody's struggling with their hair, they can send you a snap in the morning um, you know, this was the challenge that I had. So it could be a really cool, fun way to communicate back and forth with your clients if you had somebody that was in charge of that. So I think that that's cool. I also think that it's just a fun way. It, it makes your business real. Um, a lot of salons, for, for the first 10 years of my career, salons were very, um, I don't want to say like, it was just, you, you wore black clothes, you might wear a suit, you're very uh, professional in your handshake. I think salons have made a little bit of a shift to be a little more real. I think the world has done that as well. So I think Snapchat is another kind of evolution in that and just allowing your business to be more fun looking and um, attract a little bit younger clientele through there. I don't think it's the only platform you should be on, but I think it's a great one um, when you think about just social media in a whole. You're hitting every personality type. You have the Facebook uh, group, you're not going to post on Facebook the same way you would post on Snapchat, and you're not going to post on Instagram the same way you post on those two platforms. So um, Snapchat is a cool way to get somebody involved. I say it's the person that can't sit still in your salon um, that maybe is on their phone a little too much anyways. Get them involved with Snapchat and have them start telling stories about your business. All right. And then the last one is Facebook. And the thing I love about Facebook, and I really want to um, show you guys a couple things on Facebook and I can, I can pull that up, but Facebook is such a great tool. It is the reinvention of the, uh, billboard, the newspaper ad, all of those different things that you would spend way too much money on as a salon. Salons don't have a lot of money to market. So if you look at getting new clients, what we would do instead of doing a billboard or a magazine article or anything like that, we would go straight to door to door salesman tactics, which was just walk in, have a business card, talk about their hair for a second. Probably in this day and age, no one wants to just have a surprise person show up. It's just the reality. No one wants anybody coming into their business if they're not there to actually do business with the person. So um, most people have no soliciting on their signs. You can't even get near it. So if you think about Facebook, Facebook is the new way to reach people the problem is a lot of people are doing it wrong. 
So think about Facebook. Think about what attracts you when you're looking through your news feed on Facebook. Are you, um, as you're going through, if somebody has a two for one ad, are you stopping on it? Probably not. If, if you see a beautiful haircut, you probably stop, take a look, find out who it is. Then you go a little bit deeper, you go onto their page and you start looking at their work. That's what you want to have. That's what you want to happen. So, uh, when I think about what I'm posting on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, it's all about what's going to attract the, the most people or the intended person. So Facebook is great because I can take um, the, a picture of my best work, right? I can post it on Facebook. Then I can go onto Facebook, hit boost post, which let's see if I just pull that up here. So let's say I go to Facebook and I find this, this ad right here, right? Let me make this a little bigger. So I see this ad and I want to boost it. So I hit boost post. Then what's going to happen is I can go through a ton of different options, pre-made options that I've made with different targeted audiences. Or if I want to get a little bit more local, you can actually put the location of where the people are. So let's say we have a location living in the United States. If you want to bring that down, you could pick just your town. This is so specific and you could spend $5 on it. And I actually like doing it better on my phone because on my phone, I can actually circle an area and, and you might be able to do that on the computer, but I never do it. Um, you could circle an area, the diameter of my town and maybe stretch it a little bit past that and then pay $5 and get everybody to see your work. Now, this is where um, you're either going to have success with your post or you're not. The way that you have success with it is if it's something interesting. It has to be something that brings value to the person on the other end. So if you look at something that's a sale, like when we want money, um, when we feel like our salon, we need to pay payroll or we need to do different things and we need money quickly, then we start posting directly on social media saying, hey, I have, a, I have an appointment open. You should take take advantage of it right now. Everything's right now. Um, or bring in a friend or two for Tuesdays, all these different promotions that we post that, that we want something to happen the day of that post. You can't do that. You have to look at the future and say, if I post this today and I target all these people, the, a picture of my beautiful work, something I'm so proud of that I know has gotten a lot of attention in the past, I boost it for $5 then I'm focused on the future. And that's really the goal is to make sure that you're always focused ahead of time and you're not scrounging for um, people to take care of your sales when you just need it the most. So make sure that what you're posting is something interesting that brings value to the other person. Beautiful work brings value because it's somebody sitting there that maybe isn't happy with their hair as they're scrolling through. And now they're like, well, who's this person that does this beautiful hair in my area? Then they go look for you and then they find um, your portfolio of work that you have. That leads me to the other factor of you can't boost a post if it's your personal page. So even if you don't own a salon, even if you're just, you know, um, if you're a stylist working for someone, it's still good to have a professional page. So on Facebook, create a fan page. Um, you can get people to follow it and then but the, the most important thing is you can post all of your work and boost your work from that. So for $5, that's, that's half a tip on a haircut or, you know, it's not a lot of money. So, um, that's what I would recommend is that you're doing that consistently. Um, all right, cool. So that is boosting a post. Bring back up the program here. All right, and that brings me into a hashtag. Now, hashtags are tricky because I think a lot of people just go nuts. Oh, one second. There we go. Okay. Um, hashtags are tricky because uh, the problem is a lot of people post different, they, they post, they copy paste hashtags like crazy. Now, if you've recently been watching, um, Instagram is actually um, stopping this by, um, I f forget what they call it, shadow something. Um, but basically what it means is they're looking for people that are consistently posting the same exact hashtags, tagging the same people, 
because they're going they're looking at it as spam. And it really is spam if you think about it. I look at some people's pictures that they post on Instagram and I look at their hashtags, it has nothing to do with the photo. Now they might be popular hashtags, but that's not the goal. That's not what we're looking for. So the one thing that I want you guys to think about is who follows your salon on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, because if you think about it, a lot of people just post hashtags to try to get as many followers as possible because um, we've been built into this reality of a popularity contest, basically, um, whose salon has the most followers. As a salon, I don't really care um, how many followers we have. I'm more into who they are and where they're from. And um, the way that you can really do that is just by managing and looking and, and figuring out who um, who follows you. Like a salon's not getting a ton of followers at a time. So you can really look at that follower, where did they come from? And then like, let's say I'm based in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and I have somebody that likes my work that decided to follow me from Colorado, right? I'm gonna secretly probably block them and the reason I'm going to block them is because I don't want to pay for somebody that follows me to, from Colorado. It's just, it's not worth it for my local business. I have 2,500 people in my town. I, my goal would be to have all 2,500 of them follow, um, maybe a little bit outside of that. But somebody in Colorado, I don't want to follow my salon. Now, do I want them to follow free salon education? Yes. Or do I want to create two different Facebook or two different Facebook, two different Instagrams for my salon? That could be fine as well. Some people really want their salon to be popular, create a popular salon page where you hashtag everything and then create a local salon page where it's just um, local tags so that you're getting just local people. Because when you look at advertising, there's no reason that a salon should be paying nationwide advertising um, and paying and having um, the person in Colorado see your post when really you just need people in your area to see it. So that's why I talk about there's a big difference between wanting to be famous on the internet and wanting to actually just have a successful salon business on the internet. So think about it that way. Um, so if you block them, if you block the person from Colorado, they're not going to know, um, but it will keep from when you post it showing it to them. Then when you go to do a target post, you're going to get a better uh, concentrated post on that on your town, your area. The other thing is when you look at hashtags, a lot of people will post different hashtags to get a broader audience, but they don't tag so much locally. So you wanna make sure, I tag everything from the magazines locally in our town to, um, to the town. So let's just say I can actually pull up a lot of the hashtags I keep saved, I keep saved in my notes. So let me see if I can find, this is a spur of the moment quick thing here. Let's see. Nope, not going to happen. Um, anyways, basically what I tag is Salon Gratitude, which is our salon, um, Salon, New Hope PA, then I'll tag PA, then I'll tag Bucks County. I tag all the different things that have to do with my area. And then I'll tag specifically what is in the picture. So um, haircut, hairdresser, all of those things. As soon as you start tagging hairdresser, balayage, all of these bigger words, these words that are broader, that aren't for your area, all of a sudden you start getting people um, outside of your town, which is fine. It's just if you don't mind spending the money and trying to weed through all those people, that's fine. If you're on a budget and you're trying to really uh, hone in on local people, then I would start separating how you hashtag things. So a hashtag does a couple different things. I think a lot of people think that it's a searchable word. It is. Um, so if I put hashtag salon gratitude and then somebody wanted to find salon gratitude, so they put in hashtag salon gratitude, then they can find all my pictures. That's one thing that it does. The other thing that it does is it profiles you as a person on the internet. So if you think about um, just recently, if you looked up a celebrity or you look up something uh, and then you notice that in your search feed and in, in your organic searches on Instagram or anywhere else, you start to all of a sudden see 
a lot of pictures of that celebrity that weren't even by that celebrity, by random people that also like that celebrity that post pictures of that person. And what that what's happened is it took you as a person, profiled you as searching for that person that you like that person. So now it's going to start, the internet's going to start showing you images of that person to help suck you in, bring you in. Um, I look at it as like a personal profile. So if you look at me, I always have a black jacket. So if you were to put me in hashtags, it would be hashtag, you know, crazy hair, hashtag black jacket, hashtag black t-shirt, hashtag white shoes, all these different things. So now when I start looking on the internet, I start all of a sudden seeing black jackets, black t-shirts, crazy hairstyles, white shoes. I start seeing all of these things because the internet has decided what I like. Well, I've told the internet what I like based on what I search for. So as hairdressers, when you hashtag hairdresser on a picture, what happens is it's not only saying, it's not saying that you're a hairdresser, it's saying that this picture involves hairdressers. So now somebody that has, a hairdresser that has searched and looked at different people's pictures that have the hashtag hairdresser are now gonna probably see your post because you put that hashtag in there. So think about it this way. If we go more local with it, if I'm in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and I want somebody that's randomly sitting there to find my work, then all I need to start doing is hashtagging New Hope, Pennsylvania. And what's gonna happen is people that live in that town that look up stuff about New Hope are gonna start suddenly seeing my work in their feed. Then as soon as they see my work, as long as it's beautiful work that we're really proud of, that they would be interested in, now all of a sudden they're searching our profile, they find out where you work, and they become a customer of yours. It's really that simple, um, and it's just a constant thing that needs to happen. You really need to pay attention to what your profile looks on looks like on Instagram, on Facebook, because people are digging deeper. You guys are, are looking at people's profiles all the time, even if you're not letting them know that you are. You're looking at their work. So that first nine pictures on Instagram should be a cycle of all of the best work you have because most people don't go below that. Um, they just see your profile real quick. They scroll through a few pictures and then they make a judgment based on that. So just make sure that you are constantly uh, searching through there. All right. Pretty sure we summed up strategy on that one. So it starts with one. Starts with one. Um, this basically means that uh, I really think it's fun to start a new social media platform from one follower. I really think that a lot of people get tied up in how many followers they have. Um, but you'll see people on Instagram that have 500,000 followers, but 500 people like their photo. That just means that everything they're doing is not right. Um, or they bought people that are following them. So you really got to be careful. There's no reason to buy followers on anything because if you buy people, then they're not really bringing value to anything in your business. So when I look at it from uh, salon gratitude, if I were to say, you know what? I want to buy a thousand followers in new hope. It's going to cost me more money to do that. Um, I'm buying them, bringing them in. They have no reason why they're starting to like my page or they're probably fake anyways, but they have no reason why they're liking my page. So I didn't win them over. You got to win people over because then they're going to follow you for the right reasons. They're going to start um, maybe spending money in your business. It's just all of that has to do with just doing the right thing. Free salon education. A lot of people talk about, you know, the following that we've built. We built a following because we do free classes for hairstylists. So we do free videos. We've done 600 free videos. We brought value to, to our audience. And so in return, we've built a successful business from it because we actually have real people. Uh, you guys are real people that follow, that, that are learning, that are getting something out of it for free. And it's just, and, and that's how it works. You got to do the same thing with your salon. You got to bring value to win that person over, give them something to want to come to your business for. Um, so this 
slide. Stop playing to a crowd of thousands. It's more personal than that. I did a blog post about this, but um, this is really, I think a lot of people post like they're, like they're talking to a crowd, right? So a lot of people will say, um, hey guys, how are you? Kind of that thing. There's a place for that, obviously, because sometimes you are talking to multiple people. But for the most part, if you look at this video that's happening right now, I'm talking to one person. I'm talking to you, right? So when I start saying I'm talking to you and I'm pointing at you and I'm addressing you as a person out there, as opposed to, hey guys, how's it going? Um, glad that all of you are here. It doesn't make sense because you're one person sitting in front of a camera. There may be a couple random people as a salon or as a school or whatever sitting around this, but for the most part, it's one person in front of their phone watching this video. It's one person in front of their phone looking at your picture. It's one person all the time looking at your stuff. So there's no reason to say everyone. Make it more personal because the more personal you make it, the more it's going to feel directed at that person and you're going to have a better response on your post. So that's just a little tip there. So let's talk about the different types of posts. Um, let's see what time we got. All right, cool. Different types of posts, pictures. Um, pictures are great. The pro I'm not a big picture person. I, I will post some on Instagram, um, but my big thing is video, obviously. But the uh, but pictures to get a good picture um, took forever for our salon to really understand really the cheat codes of getting a good picture. Um, we looked for the best window. We always looked for the best lighting. All of these different things, and and nothing really. Make sure it's working, and nothing really worked. So, um, then we came across a light called the Diva light or a ring light, and that is something that has really changed the way our salon looks. So, I want to show you guys a couple things real quick. Um, let's go to Instagram. And slash gratitude salon. Okay. So this is actually our salon page um, prior to the ring light. Now, the other thing that happened with our salon page is somebody hacked into it. I can't get into it. Tried hundreds of times different things. I've written uh, Instagram about it, no return. So I had to start a new Instagram page. Totally fine, not a big deal. Um, I was actually excited about it because of the fact that if you look at, here's our first 12 photos, right? They're great photos, great work, very happy with it. But when you look at this, there's nothing, it's not really telling a story. It doesn't really look like a brand. It just looks like a lot of pictures put together. Now I want to show you guys our new Instagram page. And now you can see all these different photos that are showcasing our guests in the salon, um, very bright photos. The ring light makes such a big difference. So this is the photos now, you can see here. And then let me go back to the photos before. So we, we struggled, we found it was hard to get our staff really motivated to take pictures because of the fact that if you can't, um, if you can't get a good picture, then you're not gonna be motivated to take them. We got the ring light, it was a couple hundred bucks on Amazon. Um, and then once we had the ring light, they were taking pictures like crazy. We created our own feed on uh, iPhoto. So all they do is upload their pictures to iPhoto. So I have them and then I can post them on the salon Instagram. It's just become a really cool system that we've used. And the ring light is just a really cool tool uh, for you guys to check out. So I'm going to do a video on the ring light just because I think it's worth it. I think it is the cheat code for everyone. What it basically does is surrounds the, the, the person you put the camera through the middle of it and, um, and you just get a great picture. If you go to free salon education.com, there we go. Free salon education.com. You go to our shop here and you click, you can't buy a ring light from us, but I have a link down here at the bottom that says ring light. And you can actually see the ring light that I use. You can click the link here um, 
and you can purchase it through Amazon. So um, just these two links down here, it's $229 for the ring light and you get great photos with it. So hopefully that helps you guys. All right. The other form of um, content is video. And now nowadays, like this live broadcast that we're doing today um, is obviously a little more technical. Um, I have a PowerPoint in here, right here. And, um, you know, we can have multiple camera angles, all this different stuff. We spent three years buying equipment to create a live uh, broadcast. Now, the upsetting part is the way that the internet has gone and everything. Now people can go live from their phone in three seconds and, uh, and, and they have a pretty good broadcast, right? Um, so my thing for you guys is that it's a great time for, for everyone out there. Live video is great because you can go on very quickly, show tips. Um, my big thing for a salon would be to forget um, producing these complicated videos, maybe produce a few so that you have some kind of account, but just start going live on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Facebook is a little bit better because then you can boost the posts, reach people, and also um, it stays there so you don't lose your uh, live video. But uh, the, so go live and maybe do it with the last little bit of your guests. So let's say that your guests, you're halfway through the blow dry and you want to show them at their best, how happy they are, how much they love the style. So something that, you know, when you're, when you've just done a cut and color and you're really psyched about it and you're almost done with the blow dry, your guest is super happy. Go live, talk about what you just did. And also talk about the products that you're using, because obviously as a salon, we sell products and it would be a really cool uh, thing that would bring value to a lot of people if you were to blow dry, talk about the products, somebody sitting at home watching it, and they're like, you know what, I have that same hair type, I would love that product as well. And this person um, knows a lot about products and knows a lot about hair, so I should start going to them. It's that simple, like you're just trying to showcase your talent and you can showcase it to a lot of people um, that don't come to you just by going live on the internet. Um, and then a blog. A blog is something that it usually lives on your website. And um, the, the reason I put this type of content up there, I don't think you should dedicate a ton of time to a blog, but I think if you write something once a week about something that's going on, only a paragraph in your business, it's a great way to attract new customers because Google reads websites. And, and if Google's reading your website and it has a blog that talks about New Hope, it talks about um, the salon, it talks about hair, it talks about all these different things, then it's going to become more searchable. Every single word in that blog will become searchable on Google. So if somebody's typing in hair salon and New Hope and I've written that in a blog somewhere, that blog's going to come up on Google. So now um, my goal is when somebody searches for a salon in my town, it's all of a sudden I'm like the first four things that come up. I'm YouTube, I'm Facebook, I'm, uh, Instagram and I, and my Google listing is right there. That that's the major goal so that there's really no missing you. Like you could just be in the lineup of all the salons or you could own the page. That's really your decision. It's based on how much work you want to put into it. Um, you don't win with followers and likes, you win with results. This kind of goes back to what I was talking about before. It's not really about the amount of followers. It's about the reaction that you get from the followers you have. So um, are you posting uh, about having an appointment open? Do you get people from that? Um, the only way you're going to get people from that is if people are interacting with your post in the first place. So just make sure that everything that you're posting brings value. And then that value will in return get you more followers, but the right followers, not, you don't need millions of followers. And would you rather have a thousand followers where 900 of them are involved in what you're doing or a million followers where, well, that, that, those numbers are a little, a little different, but you get what I'm saying. If you have a million followers, that's a whole different thing. If you have a million followers and 10,000 people are interacting with you, it's not a bad thing either. But as a salon business, when you look at it locally, if you have 10,000 followers, but only 100 of them are really interacting with you, then it doesn't really matter. That's, that's the math I was looking for. All right. 
Um, now, the last thing, uh, I think this is one of the last things I want to talk about, reposting. Now, this is something that um, that I started doing. A guy named Andrew does hair. I think, I don't know if I had a direct conversation with him about this or if it was through a friend of ours, but um, we talked about reposting. And reposting is such a big deal in the fact that if you have a post that you really love, that, that a lot of people got had that interaction with, you want to keep that post kind of up in the top of your um, page. And the reason, like, I have no problem deleting things from Instagram and then saving them for a later date. Like, once something's kind of down there and older, there's no reason to keep it there. Um, save it for later, like blog posts and different things that I write, different things, different pictures that I have. If I think that they're going to be irrelevant later, I'll let them sit for a while. And then when they get no attention, I take them off. Also, um, when I post different things, if I post an ad or I post something that I just want to quickly just put out there for everyone, I'll put it out there for a day, maybe two days now that the algorithm's a little different on Instagram, but I'll put it out for a couple days and I just take it off right away because you want the overall picture of your Instagram uh, to be your profile, to be your uh, portfolio. So put stuff out there, but then remove it and keep reposting things that get a lot of attention because the people that follow you right now are not going to be the same people that follow you three months from now. So something that you posted a year ago that was really cool, post it again, because I promise you, even if they did see it, they didn't remember. Um, so I've got, you know, 600 videos that I've created for Instagram. I have them all saved on my phone. And so different days, I just pick one that I haven't posted in a long time. I post it up there and people think it's brand new. Um, so it's a really cool thing to do um, because it allows you, once you put in the work to have all this backed up content, then you can repost it and recycle it. Let's see. I think that's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out uh, Facebook. If you guys have any questions, you can start posting them. Um, I'm going to check f Facebook for questions. I do have uh, a few people on the live stream as well. What I want to say to you guys now is we launched the FSC Partner Program in January of this year. Um, we quickly had a couple hundred salons sign up. It was really awesome. Uh, it was a monthly fee thing that we did. It was kind of like a freemium uh, type service. So we still did the free videos, but we also did these live classes, things like this that you're watching now. And then um, as of the beginning of May, we decided, uh, me and Christina thought about it for a while. We really, since day one, wanted it to be a free service. We just, there was a lot of things that didn't seem right, didn't seem to work that well. Um, plus it's very expensive to have cool broadcasts. Um, so we launched the program, but now we've decided it's going to be free. And uh, it goes along with freesaloneducation.com, obviously. Um, our goal is always to, to provide free education for stylists. Um, that's been the motto of our company since the beginning. Uh, so, And we have great brands that sponsor free salon education. So I do want to say thank you to the brands that do sponsor. Um, we have Minerva Beauty. Dot com. They're a furniture company. Um, you'll see if you look at my salons, uh, the salon that we have now, the salon we're about to have, they furnish uh, the salons. with. We put their furniture in there. Um, the uh, Bricado is a product line that's been sponsoring us for a long time, so I want to say thank you to them as well. And um, they also have a company called Vibrastrate, who's been a great sponsor. And then... Uh, what was I going to say? We also have Paul Mitchell that just jumped on board, um, which is a, a great thing. So moving forward. So there's just a lot of, uh, basically what I want to say is thank you to all the companies that support. We've had a ton of them over the years um, supporting us. Millennium Systems International, I'll be teaching at their conference coming up, have supported this as well. So it's just really cool. That's the goal is to have companies, great companies support free salon education, and then we can give you guys education for free. Um, so a lot of new content to come. 
I appreciate uh, everybody that stuck with this company for the last few years. And I'm going to keep doing live stuff like this as well. Let me see. What are you using for the gray background? What gray background, Candy? I'm not sure what you mean. If we have, oh, probably on our Instagram. So that's actually a white wall. Um, if I show you guys the Instagram again. So like this wall right here is actually a white wall. It's just the ring light puts into focus the thing that's right next to it. So let's say you have a ring light here. It should be about six inches from the person's face, maybe 10 inches, but really close. Um, and then everything in the background gets kind of blown out into a gray tone, which is pretty cool. The closer you got, so we're about four feet from the wall when we take those pictures. The closer you get to the wall, the more in focus it's going to get, the wider it's going to get. Um, so it doesn't have to be gray, but we just kind of like the gray feeling of it. So that is that. Let's see. Let's check on Facebook here. Cancel promotion. Yes. All right, guys, you're welcome. Good tips. Thanks. Cyprian, good to see you, bud. Shadow ban. Thank you. Appreciate it. I had a blank on that one. Let's see. Cool. Yeah, this is set number two. So Sherry Burr said she likes the windows. This is um this is gonna be our podcast set back here. So we're gonna bring splitting hairs back, which is a pretty exciting uh thing. We've did that podcast for a hundred episodes. And uh, actually like 111 episodes and we're going to be bringing it back. So this is going to be where that is happening uh, for now. It's this, but, um, but we're getting there. So the studio is coming along. Suggestions for a video editing app. Okay. So I don't edit any videos on an app. I think there are some out there. Um, I do edit all the photo, like a lot of the photos on the app, but let's say that, um, let's see, suggestions for video app. So you could use iMovie app. I, I would say that that would be my only thought um, for editing a video, but it depends on what type of video. I know that um, some people like just kind of quick clips and crazy flashes. Um, on their videos, I'm not really that kind of video creator. I like creating something that has to do with teaching something um, because I think that brings more value to people than just a quick little visual. Um, there's a place for both, but it's just always been my thing. So I would say iMovie, um, but for the most part, I would probably want to do video editing on a computer. Um, I would go live on my phone uh, on all the platforms, but I would edit video on my computer. Sandra says she liked the drone from yesterday. Cool. That was, it was a lot of fun flying it again. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, Tammy says Diva should give a discount to your followers. I agree, Tammy. I also talk about them so much. I should get money for it, but either way, um, it's a great light. So that's the reason I put it on the website because a lot of people ask which ring light. And now here's the other thing, guys, that I have ring lights over there that I'm, I'm using. I ordered one for the salon. It had a dimmer, um, which is great. The ones I ordered for here, for some reason, don't have a dimmer, uh, which I'm a little bummed about. So they were both Diva lights, but there's a different version of it. Um, so make sure you get the one with the dimmer on it. Um, just... Sorry. When that camera goes off twice, it means I've talked too much because uh, <laughs> it only stays on for 30 minutes. Um, so there's two different versions. Make sure you get the one with the dimmer uh, because based on your room, you might not need all the light. Um, 
I hate to filter my colors without the proper lighting. It's kind of necessary. Is it better to just not post the pictures that need a little bump? Rachel, so I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I'm going to out everyone. Everyone filters their photos. Um, some people put no filter and maybe they got a really great shot. Um, but everybody's kind of bumping their photos or doing something. Uh, I haven't met anybody that doesn't kind of, it's not that you, so there's certain things that you should do. And if you take my live class, I actually will show you with the app, uh, what I do. Um, a couple different things. I bring up the clarity because on most photos, because they say that you're 80% more likely to click on an over clarified picture. Clarify means, um, like sharpening. So on Instagram, it might be sharpened. Uh, on um, Lightroom is an app that I use. That is uh, like a professional editing. So like if you go to Lightroom here, let's see if I got a photo from yesterday. Where are you, Lightroom? Yep. Oh, geez. At my desk, I use a bigger screen and... So it's not in the screen. All right, let's open it back up. So um, on Lightroom, it's called Clarify. So I'm going to show you guys real quick something that I do. So this was a thing that I put up yesterday. Let me see if I can find a better photo that I did. Now, this isn't what photographers do, just so you guys know. I'm not a photographer. What this is, you know what? I'm going to stick with this picture. What this is... is a way to get your thumbnails clicked on. So I'm sitting at my desk in this picture, obviously. I'm sitting at my desk. This is the Clarify. So you can see how it smooths, like the picture becomes like blurrier or smoother. This is what it was normally, but that's not as interesting looking, especially when everything on your phone is this big, right? So because it's this big, if you over clarify a picture, whether it's hair or something else, this becomes more interesting. It defines the lines. So people are 80% more likely to click that. It's the same reason we do it on YouTube. It just allows people to, um, to see that little thumbnail of a video and, and think it's more interesting than if you were to uh, not have it clarified. So you pick, um, so when you're working on your photos, either sharpen or clarify them a little bit. I bring the blacks down just a little bit to add a little depth, um, which is this part here. So you can see that I've turned that down. It also makes you look skinnier, which is a little, little trick, but it's only a trick till you see somebody in person, but it's, it is what it is. So bring the blacks down, kind of takes away uh, the brightness and adds depth to everything. And then I may add, mess with the exposure a bit and then to add a little bit more gray feeling to the photos I'll add this little uh, crop vignette which is this is what the picture looked like I bring it in just a little bit to shadow the corners and what that does is just kind of focuses on the subject a bit again I didn't take photography classes this is just stuff I like um, but if you see our stuff and you like what it is that's what I do um, blessed to be able to join for free today. You're, you're very welcome. Dina, thanks for the great info. You're welcome. How do I get my coworkers interested in having a more online presence as a team? This is Tessa. Um, I feel like a lone wolf when it comes to this stuff. It's a lot of work to do on your own. You know what? It is a lot of work to do on your own. I don't know if Tessa, I don't know if you're a salon owner or not. I think you are. Um, but I mean, I, I get my team involved because I really, I enjoy working with them. Um, but for the most part, I do most of the stuff myself because I, I want it like I'm, I'm an impatient person and I really like things to be, uh, just put out there quickly. I think social media doesn't wait. Um, I think it's a different 
platform than creating the perfect video or the perfect photo. I think you should just get stuff and put it out there, um, see what sticks, what doesn't, and just move on and learn from it. Um, I, I know it's a lot of work, but it's, is it worth it? I think is really the big thing. Is it worth it for you to do it? If it's your salon, then it is worth it. And if there's people that don't want to be involved, then, um, then I would say just don't, just don't involve them. I wouldn't say that 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 makes them good or bad. Um, some people don't like social media as much. Um, so the people that do want to be involved, maybe start with them and start showcasing and maybe the other people will jump on board, you know, and if they don't, then they don't, but it'll still, no matter what you should be focused on your online presence. And if you're not a salon owner and it's just people that you work with, then I would just run with it. Everybody out there that is surrounded by coworkers that aren't working hard or don't want, not that they're not working hard. They don't want the online presence. I, every seminar I do, the first question I ask is who wants to be famous on the internet? And most people, I would say 99% of the room always uh, says they don't want to be famous on the internet. That's the reality. I think a lot of people like um, looking at other people's stuff, but they don't feel like they need to be the person out there, but they want to be more successful. So I would say for you, if you're somebody working surrounded by people that really don't want to be involved with the internet, then it's just more, this is a personal thing. It, it's you're targeting people through your personal accounts, not through the salon. So just make yourself successful. That's what it is, uh, in this way. And, and then People follow people that become successful doing something. And then maybe you can inspire them to want to do it. But you got to put in the work first and, and show people the way. Everybody's not just going to jump on board at the beginning. Um, all right, cool. It's like Inception. Let's see. I should definitely close this up. The problem is I don't have a salon to, the salon's not opening around me anymore because we have this spot. So I've been talking for a long time, but there's going to be a lot more classes, guys. I really appreciate everybody jumping on here live, hanging out this morning. Uh, there'll be a, another Q and a coming up in the next week or so. Um, I'm going to launch my podcast again. We have the splitting hairs podcast. We have live, uh, classes that we'll be doing like just quick classes. I might even do one today if I feel like it. And, um, and then we have a live cutting class. I think it's a, coming up May 30th, I believe. Um, so that will be coming up as well. So definitely, uh, get signed up for the partnership program because that's going to become a very specific group. Um, you will be getting specific emails from that group saying when the classes are, and we won't always be going live on everything. So you might not catch it on Facebook. You might miss something. So make sure you go to fseondemand.com or go to freesaloneducation.com, click on partners and, uh, and then get signed up. It's free and you'll get all the information on everything. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you share this with any of your friends that are uh, looking to better themselves on social. I appreciate it. Uh, this class will also be available on FSE On Demand pretty soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.